Hi, this is Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this is going to be a live Q&A. And I'm going to start with a question that Kathy actually emailed. Um, I wasn't sure, Kathy, if you were going to be able to make it to the, um, to the live session, so I always write down questions that people have ahead of time. So Kathy asked, on the bear lovey pattern that was just released, am I going to do any other animals? And yes, definitely. Um, I'm planning for a bunny next, and I'd really like to have it done in time for Easter. I'm testing out a couple of different things with the ears, and I don't have any samples here because right now I'm just testing them in my head. I usually work through a lot of different variations in my head before I ever make a prototype. So I'll usually be kind of noodling around and thinking about something for a few weeks before I, uh, before I do anything with it. So for the bunny, I'm trying to decide whether I want the ears to be standing up rather stiff or if I want them to be very floppy, like a lop-eared bunny. So both of those are completely valid bunny options. The floppy ears would be more of a um, classic blanky feel, which is what I was really going for in this design. But I can make a stiffer, st I say stiff, I don't actually mean stiff, but ears that will stand up um, using the, um, the stabilizer that I sell for that. and. Um, it's very squishy and soft, but it will make them stand up. But I'm not sure how that standing up is going to work with what is essentially a floppy blanket. So I think I'm going to go with floppy ears. I'll probably test it both ways. And I'm hoping to do that testing as soon as I finish the remake of the cat quilt that I'm working on, which I'm, I'm hoping to be done with that by the end of this week. So Judy says she loves my videos. Thank you. I just recorded a new video today. Um, this is another one. I loved, in, in some of the recent classes that I've done on Teachable, I've used the computer screen to demonstrate some things that don't work really well to demonstrate on regular videos because you can't see the whole quilt at one time when I'm shooting a video. And if you do see the whole quilt at one time, you can't really see what I'm doing in one specific area. So once you zoom in, you lose the effect of the whole quilt. So I'm starting to use the um, screen casting option more for when I'm trying to show you things that happen on a whole quilt. So today I actually recorded two videos. I still need to edit them and get them loaded and all of that kind of stuff. But I recorded one that shows you how to break up a quilt um, when it's an irregular grid, because I get a lot of questions from people asking me, how do you put this together? If it's not just simple rows and columns, how do you put it together? And it's actually really, really easy. So I showed you that trick in the, one of the videos I recorded today. And the other one is a question I get all the time about what exactly does it mean when I say to start in the middle and work your way out when you're doing your quilting. So those will hopefully be ready to go in the next couple of weeks. It takes a while to edit and I can only upload videos overnight because my internet connection, it takes about an hour to upload every minute of video and it completely ruins the internet for everybody else in the house. So I have to upload videos only overnight. <laughs> one person wanted to know, um, which is the winning cat? So in the newsletter that went out yesterday, I showed all 12 of the basic cat personalities that are in the cat quilt. The cat quilt pattern has 12 different applique patterns for 12 different cats. And I showed an example of one of each of them and said that the new quilt sample that I'm making is going to get two of each cat. And then I have one leftover block, so one of the blocks is going to be different. It's going to be a third version of one of those cats. And uh, the winner so far, which is what somebody asked, is who's winning. The winner so far is Ulysses. This is Ulysses. I was really surprised by that because he's actually not my favorite. My favorite is Maurice, who's a very fat cat. Um, but this is the winner so far. So it's looking like Maurice is going to get uh, three blocks. He's got this one, the brown with the gray. And I've made this one, which I really love these colors. So this is the pomegranate background with the kind of rust colored cat. And the last one is going to be an orange background and he's going to be a cream colored cat. So that is an answer to that question. And Judy asks, what kind of thread I use? Um, you don't specify whether you're talking about machine work or hand work. So I'm going to answer both. So for machine sewing, I almost always use just regular Coates and Clark all-purpose thread. I never use like cheap dollar a spool thread. That's, um, that stuff is a disaster. It leaves tons and tons of lint in your machine and it breaks really, really easily. 
and it just doesn't last in your projects. But Coates and Clark, you can find anywhere, and it's a really good thread. Um, sometimes I'll use Sulky if I want. Sulky has a, a rayon thread that's, uh, I guess it's not their rayon thread, it's a polyester thread, but it has a more shine to it than the Coates and Clark does. So sometimes if I want that shiny effect, I'll use a Sulky thread instead. And um, when I'm outlining applique pieces, a lot of times I'll use the Sulky 12 weight thread because I want that thicker line, especially on all these cats that I've been doing because I really want their whiskers and their mouths to show up nicely. So on all of those, I've been using the Sulky 12 weight black thread to outline them. For hand stitching, if I'm doing big stitch quilting, I always use the Sulky Petites. Those are the 12 weight spools of thread. They're the same thickness as two strands of the DMC floss, but they're more round than if you use two strands and you don't have to worry about the thread separating. And I really like the shine of them. If I'm just doing regular hand embroidery, sometimes I'll use the Sulky 12 weight thread for that as well but more often, just because there are a lot more colors available and I have more control over the thickness, I use regular DMC six-stranded embroidery floss. So those are the, all the different kinds of threads that I use. Kathy likes the cats. I am having, I, the cat's quilt was one of the very first ones I designed. I think it was the second quilt pattern that I released, maybe the third, um, but it has been a lot of fun to go back and revisit these cats and make all of their blocks again. And I've been thinking about some different color combinations for fabric backgrounds. Like I've been thinking, I, I really like some of the cats on the neutral blocks, the background blocks. So I've got a really dark gray and a dark chocolate brown in the, in the um, background bundles. So I've been thinking about doing a bundle of just neutral solids to use as backgrounds. And I've also been thinking that it would be fun to do a pastel assortment, like really, really, really pale pastels for people who are, I know a lot of you guys out there are making baby quilts. So, um, so that's another bundle that I'm thinking about putting together. And somebody recently shared a quilt that had almost all greens as the backgrounds. And I have been thinking for a while now that it would be fun to do um, some background bundles that are all different shades of the same color. I thought I might start with blue and pink for the two baby you know, the two baby options that so many people use. And then if those sell well, expand. But I'm not going to be able to do any of that until we move, which is going to be later this year, because I don't have, I physically don't have the space um, anymore to store any more fabric in a safe place. Like I could leave it sitting out on the floor, but then it's going to get damaged in the sun. So um, all the places that I have to stow fabric safely out of the sunlight are full. So I can't do any different fabric bundles until after we move. Kathy gives another vote to Coates and Clark. I do like Coates and Clark for thread. It's, um, it's just a really good basic thread. So I showed the winning cat and I answered the question about plans for other animals. So somebody wanted to know what handwork I'm working on and I forgot, hang on a second, let me just go grab it. I was working on it on my table right behind me. So I just finished all of the fancy stitching this is a, a pillow cover that I made. Well, it's not a pillow cover yet. Right now it's just a piece of fabric. But uh, it's going to be a pillow cover. And I made this for the um, Big Stitch and Patchy Patchwork quilting class that I released last month. And I left, for the class purposes, I left all of these patches half stitched because I wanted to show what the fabric looked like with the stitching and what it looked like without the stitching. So now that the class is released, I've gone back and I've finished all the stitching on all of these patches. And I just, um, I just took it out of the frame the other day. So now I need to wash it and turn it into a pillow cover. And then, um, then I'll get my big quilt from that class framed up again in, that, in my quilting frame and go back to that. But in the meantime, I've been doing a lot of um, English paper piecing, which is really fun. So I grabbed my stuff that I've finished so far. I'm really, this is just kind of my in-between, in-between project. It's what I work on when I have no other big projects that are due. And I've got this bin of the hexes that I've already done the basting on. And then these are some of the hexes that I've made. So I'm just doing just very simple shapes. And I'm about ready. I had these laid out to try and figure out how many it was going to take me overall. So that's what I was working on on my table. Each of these is about six inches across. So I need to figure out 
how many I should keep doing in blue before I stop doing blue. Um, and then I've got some, some pinks that I've just started, but I haven't gotten made bigger yet. So um, that's going to be a big lap-sized quilt, and it'll be all hand-sewn. And after it's done, I'm going to do big stitch quilting on it because I'm obsessed and I can't stop. So that is the handwork that I'm working on. Judy asked what sewing machine I sew with. And I sew on a Bernina 710. I love it. I love this machine so much. It does a couple of things that I really, really like. And I always tell people, just because I love the Bernina 710 does not mean that it's going to work right for you. So I'm always really reluctant when people ask me to recommend a sewing machine because it totally depends on what you're going to be doing with it. So you always want to test drive it and think really hard about what you do with your machine all the time and the features you would like it to have. I do a ton of embroidery, of applique, and so the Bernina 710 has a couple of features that I really, really like. One, it'll stop with the needle down, which the Thoff that I had before was also a beautiful machine. I had that for 10 years, I think. My, my mother-in-law gave that to me when my daughter was very, very young because I was sewing things for her, and my machine that I had, this like my beginning Kenmore machine, was making me crazy. I was trying to do applique, and it was making me crazy. So um, this stops with the needle down, which is really, really nice. It stops with the needle down, and then it'll half raise the presser foot so I can pivot it, and that makes it really nice for going around tight curves. You can stop and do all of that by hand, but I do so much of it that that's a really valuable thing for me. So that is like my number one favorite feature of it. I also love that it ties knots for me. So when I finish sewing, I can just push a button and it does a couple of stitches in place and ties a knot underneath and cuts the threads, which is magical. It doesn't do free motion, but I bought the level that you could add the free motion, the, the Bernina stitch regulator to. It's really expensive to get that and I didn't need it yet, but I knew I might want it someday. So I made sure to get a model that I could add that to later because I do think it would be fun to do the free motion quilting with the quilt as you go technique that I use. So that's my machine. It's the Bernina 710 and I love it. Donna says, it must be difficult to know how much to have as inventory for all the possibilities of background and applique. It really is. And I feel really bad when I run out of things because then people get understandably cranky. Like you want to make a quilt for somebody's birthday and there's a deadline looming and I'm out of something and a lot of times when I order it I've got like 12 colors in that bundle that I want and if the fabric company is out of one of those 12 colors I'm out of luck until they get that last color in and sometimes there just is no other substitute so I have to just wait until they get that color back in so I'm always trying to guess on what everybody is going to want and, and but I love having options it's one of the reasons though that I I have bundles that can be used for more than one quilt. So I have like the warm neutrals, which works for the woodland critters and it works for the farm animals and it works for the safari animals and it works for the cats and the dogs so that there's one bundle. So I don't have to have inventory for every single individual quilt. And plus it leaves then you guys the options to say, oh, I want to do this, but I want to do it with the rainbow brights because this is, I want it to be a more playful and fun looking quilt. So you can take the same design and do a completely different um, color palette with it. And I've got these kind of color palettes that are ready bundled together. So I'm, I am working toward later this year offering more options. It's just going to, my new house is going to have a huge walk-in closet for me to store all the fabric in completely out of sunlight. And I, I kind of have to just hold off until I have that as an option. Because right now I have it stored in like weird, weird makeshift things that have like blankets over them to keep the sun out. And it's just, it's just kind of awkward and weird. And it involves every time I pull things out, like lots of unpacking and unpiling. So Kathy likes the hexes. I got to say, I have a lot of fun making these hexes. It's just... Well, it's hand sewing, and I love hand sewing, and I, I'm just a sucker for it. I could do it for hours at a time. So Donna says she just saw a review of a machine that stops and slightly raises the foot to help with accuracy and piecing. Just as I said, it sounds like a very good set of features. It, it really is. It's amazing. And add to that the clear applique foot, and you've got tremendous visibility for everything that you're, you're doing. You can really, really see what you're doing. So Kath loves the bundles and wish she lived in the U.S. Yeah, it is, it's crazy expensive to ship 
fabric, especially fa like anything overseas is really expensive to ship, but fabric, especially because it's heavy and it's expensive. So like you've got the cost of the fabric, which is already expensive. And then the shipping is expensive because it's really heavy. And if you've bought a lot of it, depending on what country you live in, because everybody's customs rules are different, you might also have a hefty customs bill when the fabric, when your package arrives. And it just, it just gets to be insane. So I, I wish I could do something about it, but, but, but shipping and customs charges are completely out of my hands. And, um, and I hate that. So I am always happy to, I always tell people like exactly what the fabrics are that are in all of the bundles so that if you need to buy it someplace locally, you can do that. The last question that I had ahead of time is kind of a big one. And we still have, we've only got like 10 minutes left. So I'm going to try not to talk for a whole 10 minutes about this. But, um, but the... The last question was wanting to see what I'm working on with the dinosaurs because I had a little hint in the newsletter on Monday. I had a link to my Pinterest board for dinosaurs so you could get a peek at just a hint about what I'm working on. And the dinosaur quilt is going to be next, which lots of you were excited about. And a couple people asked, so where am I in that process and what does that all look like? So I just finished drawing all of my dinosaurs which is for me the most stressful part of the whole process because I don't I don't have any training for drawing and it's kind of the weak, definitely the weak link for me. So I stress out about it for weeks ahead of time and actually for the dinosaurs, I have been stressing out about this dinosaur quilt for years now. I have been thinking about this quilt. And most of my quilts, you know, just focus on the animal's faces and I almost always do face first because then it looks like the animal is looking at you and smiling at you. So with a face first view, you get both eyes and you get a full view of the smile. So that's my ideal for any of my quilts. If I can show the animal face first and a full smile, that's what I'm going to go with. Some animals I've had to do in profile, like an elephant, you, you can't really get the view of the trunk without doing them in profile. And the llama like really needed to be in profile to get that llama look to him. And same thing with the giraffe. So sometimes I do the animals in profile, but I prefer not to. And even when I do them in profile, I've still been able mostly to zoom right in on the face. And that wasn't gonna work with the dinosaurs because if you just show a dinosaur face, so many of the distinctive characteristics of the different dinosaurs are in their body shape. So like you can't do a stegosaurus without showing all of those plates on their back and you can't do a triceratops without showing those forehead horns. And you know, a T-Rex you could do just his face maybe in profile, but you would lose the fact that he's standing up. And so I really needed to do these animals full body and in profile. <clears throat> so, um, so I stressed about that for years and I've been collecting a Pinterest board of dinosaurs that I like. Um, obviously I'm not going to copy any of the, the, the dinosaurs in, a, in that board, but it gives me an idea. For example, if you were just drawing a dinosaur, let me, let me do a quick dinosaur sketch. So if I were drawing a dinosaur, just like to draw a dinosaur and I wasn't going to applique it, I would do, like there's the back of his body, there's the back of the dinosaur. For his leg, okay, that's really bad because I'm just doing this and people are looking at me. But I, I would do the leg with his, the belly coming out underneath it, but, but you can't do anything with this line with applique. So that's what I call a dead end line, and there's no way to do that in pieces of fabric. You would have to like embroider that line on there or stitch it somehow, but that would be really weird to transfer. And so an option is to enclose that leg so that this is a separate piece of fabric from this piece up there. But I wanted to use this dots fabric and I've only got one of each color on there. It's not like the rainbow brights fabric where I've got a dark and a light um, or a dark and a medium of the the same color so it gives it makes it easy for you to do kind of slightly contrasting things like to have a cat and give him a slightly different ears but the same color family for example 
So I didn't really want to do that. So I ended up going with, with legs. more like this, like, like a little kid might draw them sometimes, which I also like that, that I like the charm of that. But that's what I ended up going for in the dinosaur quilt because you can make it out of one piece of fabric. And I do, I, I'm not trying to make you guys buy like 50 different fabrics for a single quilt. So for this one, you're gonna be able to make each dinosaur, almost all of them out of a single piece, which I think is gonna be really easy and fun to stitch. But I'm going to show you a couple of my dinosaurs. So I've got, I've got an Ankylosaurus. Um, I like how the Triceratops turned out. He's going to be cute. So I wanted these to look, I didn't want them to look like scary dinosaurs. Of course, I've got an Apatosaur. So I draw all of these just on scrap paper. Um, it's paper that's already been printed on the back. And I, I use a square ruler template and I draw a square so I know what shape I need to fit in. It's much smaller than the actual finished quilt blocks are going to be though just because I could stick this on a clipboard and sit on the couch and draw or stand. I, I don't need to have big pieces of paper to draw. And it's just, it's easier for me to draw at that scale. And like I said, I'm not good at drawing. So it's like I take every advantage I can get. So I draw it and draw it and draw it and then I throw away the ones I don't like and I ink over the ones that I do like and then I scan them and I send them to an artist who knows how to turn it digital. So what she does is she takes my scans and she traces over them in Adobe Illustrator which turns them into a vector file which means that you can enlarge it without it getting blurry. If you take any other, like if you just take a scan of your image, if you take a JPEG and enlarge it, it's going to get blurry. So I used to draw them, scan them, enlarge them to the size I wanted them to be for the block, print them out, and then trace over them again so I would have a clean line instead of that blurry line. So by hiring somebody who knows how to use Illustrator and has Illustrator, I skip that step. So they're with her right now. She's going to draw over my drawings and send them back to me. And then from there, I'll be able to enlarge them to the size that I want to fit in the blocks. And they're going to be the same 10-inch blocks like all of my other quilts so that you can mix and match blocks. But from there, I'll actually finish the pattern and start making up the sample. So that's where things stand now. I'm really excited with how they've turned out. In addition to the dino, I think I've got 10 different dinosaurs. And then I've also got a volcano and some clouds and some different plants. So you can put some of those prehistoric looking palmy kind of plants in there. So I think it's going to be fun and I, I'm really looking forward to doing it. I'm so glad that I'm finally making this. But this is going to use that Dots fabric bundle that I just released. Um, and I love, 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 love the colors and the print on those. One of the things that's really hard with something like this is that I look at it and I think these drawings are terrible because they're super, super simple. Like here's my T-Rex. He's a very friendly looking T-Rex. And I look at that and I'm like, if I was really drawing this, I would give him some stripes, I would give him some dots, I would give him some other markings. But I have to always remind myself to look at that and imagine all of that detail coming from the fabric. So I want to make as simple a shape as I can so that you guys can choose the fabrics that you want and jazz it up and make him look completely different. So like if I do him in the dots, that's gonna look totally different from somebody else who makes him with a striped fabric or with just a blotchy kind of fabric. You don't have to change anything about the pattern. You don't have to design new dinosaurs or add details to this dinosaur. All you need to do is change the fabric and you're gonna get a totally different look. So whenever I criticize my designs because they're super, super simple, I always remind myself that they're made to go in fabric and not, this is not like art that you would hang on the wall. This is just the beginning. So, um, Kath <laughs> admires my impressive dinosaur knowledge. You would not believe how much time I have spent in the last couple of years studying dinosaurs online. So, I'll, like, I'll look at the I'll look at the Pinterest file and see what people have done with those basic dinosaur shapes. Like, I'll see a Triceratops that I like, and then I'll go and look at a drawing of an actual Triceratops, and then I'll look at it and figure out how they adapted it, and then I will 
do those same kind of adaptations. So if you look at my Pinterest thing, you might see like some of the dinosaurs in there have those stubby legs like that. So I did stubby legs on like all of my dinosaurs and some of them have, um, I, like I really struggled with the mouth and I ended up doing, since they're all in profile, they all have an open mouth. So you guys are never gonna have to stitch a half smile coming in from the side of the face. Um, that was just going to be tedious and kind of unnecessary. So now they all have an open mouth. So you don't have to do any, you don't have to mark a line for the mouth and you don't have to stitch over the line for the mouth. So, but there were like one or two in that Pinterest board that had an open mouth. And I was like, oh, that'll be much easier for people to sew. So those are the kind of design decisions that I make when I'm looking at that Pinterest board of all of those different dinosaurs that I like. So Judy says she's been making a quilt for her son, but she's disabled, and so she uses quilt as you go. Any advice? Um, I'm not sure what it kind of advice. I'm not sure if you're still talking about sewing machines. Um, yeah, that was Judy that asked about the sewing machines. Um, I do like the Bernina for quilt as you go. Again, it's it's just really easy to maneuver things. I love the quarter inch foot that the Bernina has, which is actually a two part foot. It's very awkward to put on and take off, but once it's there, it's like a wall and you get a nice accurate quarter inch seam when you're joining your blocks together. But I do love the, I do love the 710 for quilt as you go. And that's almost all that I do. I mean, I do a little bit of other sewing, but almost everything is what you guys see me have in the shop. So um, mostly quilting, some stuffed animals, I haven't sewn clothing since my daughter was pretty little, so <laughs> I'm not good at sewing clothing. Um, Kath wants to know if I've drawn a Soasaurus. I did not. I didn't, I didn't even think about going beyond the actual dinosaurs. Kids are really, really obsessive about their dinosaurs, so I really tried to get the few details that I showed are right. Like the, the Stegosaurus... It has the back plates, but they're triangles instead of the kind of, the Stegosaurus back plates actually were these kind of four-sided pieces, but I didn't, it just looked too realistic with the rest of them. So I gave them triangle plates and I almost left, they have these spikes on the end of their tail and I almost left those spikes off. But when I was a kid, Stegosaurus was my favorite dinosaur. And like, I loved that spiky tail and I loved imagining them like swinging that around at their you know, whatever they were fighting. So I did, I had to put the spikes on the tail because I felt like that was a really key thing for the Stegosaurus. So I did try and go for accuracy because kids who like dinosaurs really will know the difference. So yeah, Donna says she likes the variety of adding the plants and other atmospheric elements to the design of the quilt along with the dinosaurs. And Kath says, me too. So one of the, just to kind of throw this out there, one of the things that I'm still deciding is what the background blocks are gonna look like. And I think I've settled on, I want a block that has land and sky. Like you could totally do these dinosaurs on just a solid background block and that would be absolutely fine. But with the, with the volcanoes in there and with some clouds and I do have a pterodactyl, I've got, um, I wanted some sky in there, but I didn't want to have some sky only blocks. So I think what I'm going to do is just sew a line right in the middle of the block and just do a straight seam, but have land on the bottom and sky on the top. And I'll use the blue batiks and the green batiks that I have. And um, that way you can place the dinosaur on the ground, but have his head towering up into the sky and maybe put a cloud over there. Or if it's one of the longer, skinnier dinosaurs like the ankylosaur, you can put a couple of clouds up in the sky if you just want to add some details. Or if it's the taller Tyrannosaurus, you can put a couple of plants over next to him or a volcano in the background. Or you could even do a block that has no dinosaurs that just has the volcano and a couple of clouds and some trees and things around it. So I think there will be a lot of room for you guys to play with the pattern. But I'll probably do up a couple of samples also just with a solid background block so people can see that option. I want to start doing that with more of my quilt patterns, showing you a couple of different options for ways that you can put them together. I'm even thinking about maybe doing sashing on this one. So I haven't decided yet. I'll wait till the patterns come back from the artist and then I'll decide with some quilt blocks what I want to do. I might do the wonky sashing though. So Susan needs dinosaurs for her grandchildren, so count her in. I love dinosaurs and I totally loved dinosaurs as a kid. My daughter has had no interest in dinosaurs. She was very interested in space. So Victoria says, hi, hi, Victoria. And 
And Heather says that she's loved making my stuffed animals and could there be a dino stuffy to match the quilt? And she guesses Dexter could be modified. Dexter could very easily be modified to turn him into a, a dinosaur. I've always felt like dinosaurs and dragons are fairly interchangeable patterns. Um, one thing that I might do is make like a really simple two-sided stuffed animal, something that's more like Warren. Um, he's really, really easy to make. The dinosaurs have, have tend, most of them have a fairly skinny neck, and that's a very difficult shape for beginners to make successfully in a stuffed animal. It's really hard to stuff that well. Um, you see a lot of kind of broken necked rag dolls and stuffed animals out there. The very first stuffed animal I ever made was a, was a teddy bear out of the cut off legs from a pair of jeans that I hand sewed it and it was really a mess. But um, I made the neck way, way, way too thin and it flopped over and I couldn't get it stuffed very well. So dinosaurs have that trickiness to them. They have that skinny neck. So um, if I did one, it would probably end up looking very like Dexter, which is more like a baby dinosaur kind of look. Um, so everything's shorter and fatter and chub chubbier and rounder. But I am thinking about doing some two, just like pancake style softies that will really coordinate with the quilts. So that's something that I thought about doing this year. And I've also thought it would be really fun to do a dinosaur lovey, but I haven't decided on that yet. So that is everything. So that's it. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'll see you next time.